Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to take a look inside a box of Edward's brand new release. It's 4 h scale Profi Pack of the Mustang. This one's slightly different because it's in the RAF markings. Very unusual and kind of striking looking. It's not the usual kind of bare metal kind of look. Um, so yeah, it looks a really nice kit. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. Alrighty, so here it is. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? So, time of filming this review, which is May 2021. This is brand new, just brand new release. It's a Profi pack, not limited edition, so it should be around for a few years. You know how Edward are with some of the kits, they can be a little bit scarce and hard to find. It does look beautiful. I don't know what it is, it's just in the RF markings, it just looks really nice. I think it looks better than bare metal, although that might be a little bit of a controversial thing to say, I don't, I don't know. Um, before we look at this kit, if you're like me, like 30 second scale warbirds, then um, I actually have these markings on the Tamiya kit. So I have the Tamiya 30 second scale Mustang and Extra Deco does the um, markings for it in exactly the same in the RAF scheme. So you can do a 30 second version of this if, if 48 is a little small for you. Um, getting out of the way, uh, that out of the way, it's model number 82104. And it is 48 scale, this one. And there are your markings. You, we'll look at them closer in a minute, but you've got your three in the RAF camos and you've got three in like metal. You meant your typical metal finish. That was Australian flag on the back there, which is kind of cool too. Okay, so I've not opened a box yet, so this is the first time. So let's open up and see what we've got inside. Ooh, so we've got individually packed bags. Well, that one at least. If you don't know, Edward did like a gazillion different versions of Mustangs. There's tons of them. Um, I've not built one, but they look really nice kits. So here's the sprues basically, being a pro pack you should have some photo etch and yes you do, you have the photo instruments, like several different versions, we'll look at the minute, some decals, uh, mask set which is always awesome, especially for warbirds and the instruction book which is nice and glossy and in color. Alrighty so let's kind of go through this real quick, firstly there's a ton of information on the front here, um, if you want to read that pause it and you're welcome to do so if you can read it, um, tons of information about the Mustang. And moving on, typical typical layout, you have the parts, the colors, which are in guns, aqueous, which is your kind of black, your um, kind of synthetic acrylic, kind of like alcohol version, and you have Mr. Color, which is lacquer, and we have MRP too. It has a color name too, so you have, you know, whatever paint you use in a flat black, obviously you use whatever color you need. Um, go for the instructions here, typical kind of Edward, 40 scale warbird kind of configuration, you're building the seat and the cockpit's up. Some for PE going in there. Where you see red, that's where you kind of sand it down and remove it to put the PE in. Um, moving along, again, just painting it up. You get two fuselage parts, sandwiching the copper tub inside, being doing the wing spar. You got the wings. Wings attached onto the fuselage, tail. And it looks like the instrument panel goes in later at the end once the cockpit tub's in. So there's your instrument panel. You've got to pay attention here to the markings. So if you've got markings A, C, well, basically everything but B, you're going to use P1 of 8, which is um, on the sheet we looked at a minute ago. So you got, again, you've got two different types of instrument panels. So you're going to use these two, if you pretty much everything. If you're going to do B, you're going to use those two. Slight variation. Going through, you got the wheels. Um, there's no engine this kit, but you do can get an aftermarket eng engine from Edward. It looks beautiful too, Brazin. Um, pretty well, resin engine, you can put in this if you wish. Just looking back here, the cow flaps are attached, right? So, yeah, so you need to cut some stuff out if you want to put the engine. The vendor kit, the mask, shows you how to mask it up, what parts to use for the canopy. Flaps. Tell you how it's going to stand, stance, spinner, and the props, propeller. It's a couple of long range fuel tanks. And that's the markings. So beautiful. This is A is the Edmonton Special. So this is um, Royal Canadian Air Force, Hudson, England, April 45. I do like the yellow on there, I think some of my favorite ones out of all of them. So if I was going to build this, I think this would be where I go for this, number eight. D, we're looking at um, Digby in England. Doesn't say squadron or anything, but April 45. 
this one here. These are all going to be late, aren't they? Late war. So again, April. These will be April 40 or April 45, I think. This is Peterhead, Scotland. Um, 19 Squadron. Very similar to the first one we saw, but without the yellow on top. D, we're looking at, again, this is January 45, um, Royal Australian Air Force. Free Squadron. Kind of nice to the tail. And the nice thing here too is when you look at these colours, because the whole thing isn't kind of chromey. There's you know, some parts of flats, some paint parts of chrome, like some parts of metal, and some parts are kind of painted silver. So you can see here, you know, which what how to paint it. And they, they do a really good job, Edward, at kind of distinguishing, you know, painting different, you know, variations of tones and metals and that kind of stuff. It's a Lee 45. This is well, I'm not reading it. It looks like um, I'm not sure to be honest with you, but this is this one right here. And finally, F is Wick up in Scotland, England. Sorry, Wick, England, 1945. Okay, and um, number 303, Post Squadron. Awesome. So, like I just mentioned, they do a really good job here showing you. So, what's what's natural metal, which is going to be shinies, and your aluminum, which is your lacquer, which is your pet silver, basically. So, if you're using Tam Tamiya. Lacquer paints, LP11 is going to be this dark color here, your aluminum lacquer. I mean, natural metal is going to be your metalizers, um, like, you know, your AK Street metal kind of stuff. Again, really good job of showing those. And um, the back, stencil conditions. So, well, stencil, it's not too many on this guy. And there you go. So cool, kind of what you expect from Edward for a 48 scale World War II jet. Or jet, pro, not, it's a Warbird actually, right? So, zoom it in for the photo etch. Looking good, typical Edward. Um, actually, looks really nice. You can see uh, this might be one of the newer types where I don't know if you can see it in the light, but you see how the instrument dials are kind of raised and kind of glossy, like the glass. See that? But the older ones weren't quite like that. They were more 2D, but this one's looking really good. So, so that's your instrument panel. We've got some straps and a um, few other little parts here and there. Okay, you got your mask, die, it's the die cut, you're not going to see much in the light, I don't think, but it's all cut out, and this is for your mask, for your canopy. Decals. Bone of contention with a lot of people, new Edward decals. Let's see what we're going on. These have been a real disappointment recently for me. I always buy the Edward kits for my markings, but they've just been really bad. They, they switched from Calligraph to do it in-house, and it's really gone down in quality. So let me see here, we've hopefully got some good colors and stuff. They're okay. Again, it's it's not perfectly. Uh, the problem I have with these, the color grass perfectly colored. If you're doing Weber, it's going to be okay. But if you can see the blue there, I don't know how well you can see on the camera. But it's all kind of blotchy. It's not a solid color of blue. You can see that there in the light. Um, yeah, not my. It kind of kills me. They do beautiful kits, but used to do beautiful markings, but now the decals have gone kind of to crap. To be honest with you. So here's, here you go. Here's the decals. Um, they're, they're usable, but not as nice as um, a lot you see nowadays. Again, you know, blotchy, the colors aren't great. That guy. And then here we have the stencils. Just trying to see if you can read the, um, the lettering on here. Sorry, move this out of the way. Yeah, you just about make it out. Again, not super vibrant or as good as it used to be, but we color graph, but there you go. They're usable. Okay, now for the parts, there's not gonna be tons of parts here, so nice these bags are kind of um, resealable. And here we go, let me zoom back out so you can see the whole sprue. There you go. It's really beautiful, I mean, uh, detail is so fine. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hopefully you can. The rivets are so, you know, they really kind of awesome. The way the surface detail, the rivets, like on here, I mean, you can see, make that out. And the light, you can see this, the, um, the wings. Very, very nice. Crisp, no, no flash or jack pin marks. Well, there's a couple inside there. That one's quite deep, so you might need to take care of some of those. So don't like sand it down so it doesn't foul up the parts, but nothing in harm's way anywhere. But beautiful.
Okay, this is how they do a clear part, it's always on like a wagon wheel. So you've got, I guess, different versions. I think they do something different versions of Mustang, it's pretty generic for everybody. So different types of canopy, which is kind of nice because if you break one, you can always go to a reserve, I guess. It might be a slightly different shape or whatever, but if you break one, it's better to have one like that than none, none at all, right? So got some little parts around here, various lights and stuff. And um, yeah, looking pretty clear, not much distortion. Not really a ton to talk about there, but yeah. <laughs> Interesting how they always do like a wheel. Alrighty, last bag. So we have a few sprues in this guy. Okay, so here's a fuselage. Again, you can see that detail, all those rivets. Just, I mean, once you get a wash on, this going to look beautiful. And the other side is obviously going to be the same. Okay. Um, what else we got next? We've actually got four sprues. So two, this guy's wings spar looks like and some wheels. Help I zoom out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, looking really good. Not too much to see on here. Okay. Then next up we have there's tons of different types of propellers. Again, these are kind of one size fits all, so different versions building out the same kit. Instrument panel, see it's raised. We also could put it on the photo etch option. Sound it back, put a photo etch on. Again, really nicely done. Okay, and finally this guy. So it's like the fuel tanks. And some rockets there. I think, I think this one has rockets on there. So again, it's probably a generic sprue they throw in there. But a few spares boxes, like you have a few rockets. Again, really nicely detailed. That is it. That's what you get for your money. So if you're into 48 scale warbirds, it looks really nice. Um, I just really dig these markings. I have all the Spitfires. Again, I don't know why, just maybe because I'm very British, I'm kind of biased, but I do like the um, camo markings on the Mustang. But there you go. So, great kit. Looks plastic is exceptional. Again, you know, looking at some of the detail on here, you know, they do, nobody does it better than this. I mean, it's so fine. Those rivets and stuff on that surface, it's pretty amazing. The only thing is those decals, let them down once again, but it is what it is. If you, they're gonna look maybe aged or weathered with the blotchy kind of colors and stuff. But nevertheless, this is um, looks a really nice kit. This is, this is Edward's 48 scale Mustang and it's the Profi Pack Edition.